After scraping into the top six at the end of the season, Jose Mourinho now has a full summer to work with his players ahead of his first season at Tottenham. But how will the Portuguese manager be lining up next season? Well, that's what I'm going to look at today with a potential Tottenham starting eleven for next season. First off, we start with the goalie position because it's going to be Hugo Lloris. Yes, Joe Hart is signed, but as no more as a third goalkeeper, a second backup, if you will. Paulo Gazzaniga did... He did an okay job when Lloris was injured last season, but he's nowhere near the French international. And honestly, it looks like he'll be spending the last few years of his career at Tottenham. With that said and done, though, we move into the defence. And this, this has been a bit of a pain point. When Jose Mourinho came in, there was all this talk about how he's going to have a low block and park the bus and Spurs are going to be more resolute defensively. And it didn't quite turn out that way. There's still a lack of defensive solidity at the back. There isn't much consistency within the team. And this is definitely, definitely a place that Spurs need to improve. So what have they done? They've gone out and bought Matt Doherty. The Wolves fullback flying forward from either right back or right wing back is a really good addition to the squad and certainly will do a better job than Serge Aurier has done. Yes, Aurier does get a bit more flack than he actually deserves and has been a decent player, but there just seems to be one or two mistakes in him that he can't get rid of. Both Bayer Leverkusen and AC Milan are reportedly in the race for him, as well as Carl Walker-Peters, who has now been sold to Southampton. So that leaves Doherty as pretty much the one and only right back in the squad, although Jetson Fernandez has been trolled there throughout pre-season. Alongside him, and there is Eric Dyer. After Mourinho came in, he played in central midfield and then got switched to centre-back, and now it's clear he's a centre-back. Mourinho said it, Dyer has said it, he played there for Spurs, he played there for England, his future is at centre-back, and when he's on his game, he could definitely be one of Spurs' best. Alongside him, though, and this is where the controversy is going to come in. Now, Jan Vertonghen's left the club. Toby Alderweireld is still a quality defender, although there seems to be a little sort of hangover of the Pochettino area associated with him. Davison Sanchez, the same sort of thing. He's got all the attributes to do well, but then sort of lacks the concentration and just isn't as good on the ball when it comes to passing as the likes of Alderweireld and Dyer are. Alongside this is Jaffet Tanganga, who looks to have a really bright future at Spurs and will continue to get more minutes as he's only a young player. So the one player I'm putting alongside Dyer isn't even at Spurs at the moment. That is Milan Skriniar. Now, the Inter Milan defender is set to leave the club because, well, he's not too happy with Antonio Conte, and Conte's got a few defenders ahead of him, the likes of Godin, the likes of Kolarov, who they've just brought in, De Vrij as well. Skriniar could be number one choice in North London. The thing is, there will be a potential swap deal if this one goes through that could see Tangi and Dombele head in the other direction. Of course, this is all just rumours at the moment, but I'm putting a few transfers in there to make it a little bit more exciting. And talking of the word exciting, that is completely opposite of the left-back position, which belongs to Ben Davis. Possibly the least exciting player in the Premier League. Does his job, does what he needs to do for the team. Pretty solid, 7-8 every week. The odd 6 here and there, the odd clanger. Again, not really going to be the best left-back in the league, but definitely, definitely not the worst in the top half either. He'll definitely be ahead of the likes of Ryan Sessignon, who... Until a few weeks ago, it looks like he was going to go out on loan, but now it looks like he might stay with the squad. And Danny Rose, whose future definitely seems to be away from North London, especially for those of you who have watched that recent Amazon documentary. Moving into the midfield then, and we've mentioned about new signings, and there'll be a new boy lining up in Spurs' midfield this season, and that is Pierre-Emile Hoybier. Now, the former Southampton captain joined in the summer in what turned out, as I mentioned earlier with this Carl Walker-Peters deal, to be a really good deal for Spurs. Around 15, 16 million is the amount they paid for Hoybier. They sold Carl Walker-Peters to Southampton, the club they bought the Danish player from, for around 12 to 13, so technically... They did a swap deal and only paid $3 million on top. This is fantastic business from Daniel Levy, who more often than not, me included, gets a lot of hate from Tottenham fans. Anyway, Hoiberg will definitely add some steel to this midfield and definitely, definitely be a starting member of this central midfield position. The reason I say so is because no one else can really do his job. Moussa Sissoko puts himself about brilliantly, but doesn't really have the composure on the ball to then find the pass once he's won it back, and his dribbling is really something to behold. And alongside this as well, there's Tangi Ndombele, who I mentioned before, if Skriniar were to join the club, he'd probably be at Inter Milan, although recent reports are suggesting it might not happen this summer. Anyway, moving on to the partner of Hoybier in the centre, and it's Giovanni Lo Celso. If you were to watch from the outside, Lo Celso's stats have been pretty poor. Didn't have a Premier League goal this season, and I believe didn't have a Premier League assist this season. But definitely, definitely grew into his role. Signed by Pochettino last summer on the loan basis at first from Real Betis. He took a few weeks to get into the starting lineup, but once he did, 
he really typifies a Spurs player, definitely with Spurs' long history with Argentinian players. A left-footed wizard who can pick a pass, dribble through one or two players and definitely puts in an insane amount of work, he is the perfect partner for that central midfield position. Of course, there's a backup, there's also Harry Winks as well, and other youngster Oliver Skip has been sent out on loan to Norwich for the season. So into the attacking area now, and on the left-hand side, Xiong Min Sun who else is it going to be? Not only is he an unbelievable attacker from that left-hand side, but also when Harry Kane inevitably gets his yearly injury, Son is there to fill in as a striker as well and still comes up with the important goals. What he's done over the last five years at Spurs cannot be dismissed and honestly, he's getting to that point where he is the one of, if not the first name on the team sheet. Certainly, he's ahead of the likes of Lucas Moore and Eric Lamella who have their moments, but they're just not consistent enough. The whole thing with Lucas Moura, I've spoken about it with so many players at so many different clubs, is that you can't live, you can't dine out off one spectacular moment. Yes, he scored a hat-trick in the semi-final against Ajax to get Spurs into a first Champions League final. But since then, yeah, it's been a bit of hit and miss, a bit of here and there. Not exactly what you'd expect from someone who made such a big-time play in that semi-final. So with Thielman's son on the left, we're moving to the centre now, and I'm going for Deli Ali. For those of you who watch this for a long time, you'll know, especially, that I am not Deli Ali's biggest fan. Partly, I think he's a victim of his success. He did so well in his first few years in the Premier League, it's always difficult to live up to those numbers. But secondly, I just feel like he's gone off the boil. Like, what he did that made him so good when he came in was get on the end of long balls, or certainly a flick on from the likes of Harry Kane. He managed to get into the box, score a hat full of goals, really work hard and did the simple things well. Now it seems like he's been found out a bit and he doesn't really have that extra trick or that extra sort of skill in the locker which sets him aside from the rest he sort of joined the rest of the pack in terms of being a good attacking midfield option for tottenham and for england he's not really standing head and shoulders above like he was a few seasons ago when he managed to get 18 goals in the league despite this though i think with jose Mourinho, spurs gonna go with a 4-2-3-1 and he'll definitely be the best option in that number 10 role but on the right hand side this is where i'm gonna pitch for spurs to bring in a big name signing a former tottenham player gareth bale now, we've seen at Real Madrid that things aren't necessarily too well between him and the club. And, well, the Welshman should just leave. He should just leave. And, honestly, if he's going to leave, it looks like the Premier League are the only league who are going to have any sort of money available to try and attempt to cover his ridiculous wages at Real Madrid, while simultaneously giving him a good standard of football. Spurs are in the top six and in the Europa League next season. And, yes, they're not going to be able to pay that wage that he's on at Real Madrid but not too many other clubs can. And even if they can, are they then going to go and spend it on a 30-year-old who's injury prone? And well, it looks like he's got a few attitude problems at the moment. Of course, there is a history with him and Spurs, so you'd be more inclined to think that he'd be giving more of an effort when stepping onto the pitch in North London. So on that right-hand side, it's a bit of a dream, but Gareth Bale. And if not, there's still a perfectly viable option in Steven Bergwijn. He had a few good spurts since joining from PSV in January, and if he gets more game time and more consistent run in the team, you can only see him improving. But let's be honest, if it was a straight pick between a fully fit and on-form Bergwijn and a fully fit and on-form Gareth Bale, you're pretty much choosing Bale every time. Up front then, that leaves the most difficult decision in the squad. No, just kidding, it's Harry Kane. It always has been, always will be, and unless he's injured severely, which normally happens once or twice a season, it will be the England captain. One of the deadliest strikers in the league, his record shows that even when he's been out for so long, and Spurs are still in this difficult position of trying to find a backup. No one worth their weight is going to be wanting to come and sit in as a number two to Kane and just wait until he gets injured. But also, it's a pretty big deal, certainly for a smaller striker, if they're to make the move to the top of the Premier League. I say the top, near the top, top six. That's the case for the likes of Callum Wilson, who's now joined Newcastle. Ollie Watkins from Brentford, it'd be, Brentford, sorry, it'd be a massive step up for him. The same thing with Josh King at Bournemouth as well. On the other hand, you've got the player who is quality enough to replace Kane when he's out of the squad, and that, I believe, should be Edin Dzeko. If Juventus decide to sign Luis Suarez instead of Dzeko, I would definitely implore Spurs to go for the Roma forward. I'm just not so sure he'd actually agree to a move, and he'd have rather high wages for a 33-year-old backup. So there you have it, my potential Spurs 11 for this season. But you guys, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Have I picked any of the right players or who should Spurs bring in to strengthen this squad? Whilst you're at it, you can smash the like button and click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.